the big exciting news for this week was publishing chapter six of Cooperative Enterprise and Market Economy by Louis Rosetto, translated by our own Mr. Matt Noyes. And this chapter I found especially interesting um, because he goes about well, he talks about a, a number of different things in this. And actually what I think we're going to discuss mostly is kind of comes actually towards the end of the chapter. Um, mm. But what he, one of the things he talks about is how to a uh, worker cooperative, an uh, enterprise that's organized around labor, how it's like, what makes sense as a way for it to, um, count or account for uh you know uh, people's labor inputs and he puts forth this idea that maybe not everybody's labor should count hour for hour the same which is just almost just another way of kind of stating a, a real kind of just basic thing from the economy which is not everybody gets paid the same wage not all jobs pay the same wage but he has his kind of own way of of uh, getting into this and and talking about it and Matt, um, so I was hoping you're here if you uh, have gotten your your wits about you back from the <laughs> the radishes um, and uh, <laughs> you want to kind of you know maybe give the breakdown of what uh, Rosetto's uh, thing is here and I'll actually put on the screen the the article and the little chart so we can look at it while we're talking here. Let me do that. Yeah, I think um, one line that stood out to me when I was uh, translating it that I enjoyed was at a, somewhere in that passage. He says, okay, but wait a minute, you know, isn't this just, isn't this argument that I'm making really just a way to justify um, inequality among members that's not based on economic rationality, but just reflects power differences? Like he's just basically like questioning, bringing this sort of fundamental question to himself about it. Like, is, is this just like some sort of rationalization of inequality? Um, and, you know, obviously he, his answer is no, it's, there's, a, there's a very strong economic logic to this, which is about understanding and tracking value flows related to labor and about the idea of, um, the idea that it's a really a deeper idea of patronage, right? Is the idea is that your contributions and individuals contributions to the cooperative need to be recognized and uh, remunerated in some form in a way that is consistent with and with the principles of uh, cooperativism and is logical with the economic system with the way cooperatives function and so his argument is that that this is a way to do that that the way that you go about this issue is by understanding that when people are contributing their labor the labor that we do embodies not just sort of a kind of standard abstract labor like all of us are working but we do different things when we work and the different things that we do can involve contributions of different factors. So I could bring a kind of administrative factor to it. I could bring a particular technical skill. I could bring whatever. Those are the things that need to be tracked and understood so that you, so that the business, the cooperative operates rationally, operates kind of according to the economic rationality of a cooperative. And um, mm -hmm. so just the last thing I'll say about this, the, the key thing is he really separates this from the way that the market does this. <laughs>